What's up everyone? It's Charles here with Rocket Punch Army to do a review of the Transformers Masterpiece MP27 Cybertron Security Ironhide. Finally got this guy in. He got lost somewhere in the post office for a couple of days. So a uh, little late in the review, but finally got it. Here he is in the box. All right, It's your typical Masterpiece type box, except it is a little bit bigger than your standard masterpiece. Obviously it is a little bit bigger figure. So the front you see here his uh, Nissan Cherry Vinette mode and obviously his robot mode with the ever popular diapers going on right there. Alright, if we spin this around we do see all the gimmicks and there's actually a few uh, things included in the set which is pretty cool. Uh, you'll see everything down here. Uh, some scaling pictures here. The couple of faces he has and obviously him using the little gimmicks there. The sides show him with his hand nozzles to spray water and the other side is just his alternate mode. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and open this up and check it out. So we see him here laid out in his plastic tray similar to all the other Masterpiece uh, Transformers. Obviously he's here in his uh, alternate mode. On the left we also get the static laser gun. We get a couple of uh, laser pistols here. His battle sled. Uh, another weapon right here. If we turn it around, we can see uh, the alternate face, at least the back of it. The sonodar, I think that's called. Uh, his hands with the little nozzles on the fingertips. We also get spare nozzles here, uh, which replace the hands completely. His rocket pack and uh, effects here. And then these things, I think, are supposed to replicate uh, some G1 parts. I guess the, the gun pegs or whatever. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this guy. Been waiting long enough for him. So uh, I hope he's every bit as good as he seems to be. And by, by the way, um, this is the first time I'm actually holding this thing. And all right, so let's see. First impressions. Uh, yeah, it's actually painted. I thought this was just red plastic, which uh, I love paint. It does give it a more special feel, I guess. Uh, there are a little bit of dots, you know, like dust falls in the factory as these things are moving along in the assembly line. Just as long as there's no fingerprints. I seem to get a lot of fingerprints in a lot of the painted stuff I get, but uh, everything looks good. So let's move some stuff out of the way, uh, see how good he rolls. All right, so he actually does roll fairly well. I'm actually quite surprised it's rolling and it's a good thing too that he's a little bit of a bigger vehicle which gives him more ground clearance compared to the other cars which scrape along the floor so that's a really nice touch I'm loving the chrome bumpers I love the little silver trim around the headlights which are chrome which give it a little bit of contrast uh, just gives it that little extra uh, detail there and a beautiful Tampo printed Autobot logo you got the clear blue windows which allow you to see inside and see the rest of his robot parts and this right here, I think, is a nod to G1. The little face that, because, you know, the original G1 didn't even have a real Ironhide head. It was just basically, this was the head, the, the chest part. Uh, and it had a little sticker back there that had the face. And I wanted to have the G1 here with me. Unfortunately, it did not happen. But uh, I think the important thing is to have this guy here for review. Uh, the wheels, standard plastic, just uh, pinned in there uh, with uh, black plastic and just painted silver rim detail there. Uh, you got the Tampo printed uh, stripe here which is actually three different colors. You get yellow, it starts to get slightly orange and kind of brownish yellow back here which is cool. I didn't really uh, know that that was uh, like that. I just thought it was yellow. You get this little detail here on the top. Uh, I guess this is a little storage area like if he's carrying stuff and whatever. Um, and this is the bottom. Um, rather clean. I mean you can tell it's a transformable uh, vehicle, but it's not very messy. Uh, it almost gives the impression of this uh, to be very easy to transform, which is something I'm going to want to do in just a moment, but we're obviously going to scale him with some other vehicles. Now here he is next to the rest of, uh, or at least some of the other Autobots, and uh, because the camera is so close to this, it kind of gives the illusion that Bumblebee is gigantic next to him, but um, I'm just trying to fit everything in here. So let's let you take a look there how it is. Now looking at these, the first thing you're going to wonder is like, do these actually scale with each other? I'm going to have to venture and say probably not, but do they look good together? Yes. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I think we've had some kind of version of this vehicle here in the U.S. Um, Mitsubishi had a weird looking 
type of minivan, whatever. I've seen these on the street uh, in one way or another, and I kind of remember them probably maybe being a tad bigger, even though they're small vans, than a Datsun, which I used to also frequently see as a kid around here since they had a shop that would modify these. But um, I don't know, whatever. You make your decision there by looking at that. But we are also going to just put Bumblebee in here since the perspective kind of made, the, made him, whoa, what am I doing? Crashing cars. My depth perception sucks. So when I had him here, he kind of looked big, but here's what he actually looks like next to Ironhide. So he's like a little baby. And of course, we're going to see if uh, this guy fits in here. All right, pull these things out. All right, then we're going to run it up. I was kind of hoping his front bumper wouldn't hit. Uh, but you can roll it up in here and it fits beautifully. And here is an interior view for those of you that are interested. All right, so I've gone ahead and taken all the parts out and just dumped them here uh, in a very organized fashion. What I want to show you here is the battle sled. It looks like they're doing what uh, Bandai does with their solo Chogokin, which is just making these stands where you can throw the hundreds of accessories on and display it. Um, and I, I have a thing against that. I'm just not fond of things like that. But if you guys want to organize your stuff and keep it in one spot in case you throw out boxes, you don't save them, this is the way to do it. So uh, let's get this started. We're going to put this over here, which, by the way, check out that chrome. It sucks. It's just scuffed so bad. It's not fingerprints or anything. Uh, it just looks scuffed like they didn't give a crap about the chrome. We're going to put that there. Uh, we have the, what is this, this static laser gun, I think it's called. All right, which is reminiscent of a gun he used in one of the episodes in G1. And we're going to attach that here up front. And in case you're wondering, he uh, used this weapon. You guys will see I did my homework. He used it in uh, the episode called uh, City of Steel and a Prime Problem. All right, so that's where he used that. It also comes with these pistols, which kind of look like Bumblebee's pistols, just a little bit bigger. So we're also going to attach those. Those go over here on the sides. I'm sure you guys are having fun watching me do this. So what I'm going to do is actually put everything together. Um, everything fits on there. I'll show you the finished result. All right, and then the last bit here is a little missile. So this is the stand here. Uh, again, it is like a Solo Chogokin stand. If you guys have watched my previous videos where uh, if I do happen to put it together, very reminiscent, except this is so much easier. Things don't pop off when I'm trying to put something else on, so a uh, big plus for that. And speaking of Solo Chogokin, if you guys are into that, these kind of look like... Uh, What's his name? Uh, Zambot's hands, right? With the little holes there, except Zambot shoots missiles, this shoots water, but you get the idea. And the only thing missing on here is the actual alternate face, but fear not, it is down here. So, yeah, uh, battle sled. Uh, okay, moving right along. So the very next thing we're going to move into is the transformation. You get the full color uh, booklet here. Uh, with full color instructions. Uh, it does lovingly refer to the battle sled, as I call it, uh, which I read somewhere that's what it was called. It just refers to it as a platform, but I think battle sled is so much more badass. But the instructions, typical uh, line art here, okay, to get it together. The rest is just full color. It actually shows you uh, on this side, I'm sorry for all the weird camera angles here, but I have very small review area. Uh, it does show you the jet thruster, missile launcher, utility sensor, uh, liquid shooter. So it does name all the accessories here. All right. And it is called a static laser gun. Okay. All right. You also get a um, card, a little collector card, uh, whatever, a bio card, which is uh, just typical. Uh, mine's a little warped, but it's cardboard, nice and glossy, cool artwork. You also got this thing that goes into the chest area, which is, uh, you know, when he scans and finds a dinosaur, uh, that recreates that. All right, and then this little thing in Japanese, I don't know what it says. So yeah, let's go ahead, get this guy transformed. So 
sorry to interrupt that just for a second, but I know there is like a, I wouldn't call it a gear walk mode really, it's just like a mode where you can just transform them like this, put the arms out just, you know, uh, in a different manner, obviously like down here somewhat. Uh, I don't really want to do that, but you can uh, to make it look like the G1. All right, otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and continue. Dude, this is awesome. Uh, now that I have in robot mode, wow. I've seen a lot of pictures, and I've always been like, eh, it looks kind of weird, different angles. It is true what a lot of people are saying. It looks better when you have it in hand. Uh, pictures, it's, I guess it's not very photogenic, but it looks good. I always thought it looked so weird from the side. I'm looking at it now. Uh, I'm actually quite happy with the way it looks. I think if there's one thing I would probably want, a little bit different, is either not have these um, plates here, or whatever the uh, skirts, uh, or have them be able to angle out. I don't like the idea of this banging into that and leaving marks there. Um, and, and this leg, uh, you know, it's a little looser than I'd like it to be. I wish this was ratcheted in and out. Uh, this one seems to be uh, good enough, but before we really check that out, let's just take a moment to just uh, let it all sink in. This guy just looks so badass. And I think because I was expecting him uh, to be smaller, I think now that he's in robot mode, it's one of those things that just hit me like, wow, he's actually a little bit bigger than I thought. And I had seen pictures previously, I mean, obviously on the, the box itself, but I'm just happy he's, uh, he's a good size. So he's kind of like in the middle of like an MP10 and, and a regular Masterpiece uh, Autobot uh, car. Uh, again, he, you know, since it's the same red that you saw on the vehicle mode, yeah, it's painted red. It looks nice. I really like the way they did the ankle pivots here. But, uh, you know, I guess we'll check out the articulations. So I'm talking about that stuff anyway. So we have the head here, right, which is uh, on a ball joint. I, that, that's exactly what I wanted to point out. Uh, my face keeps popping off. Well, his face, you know what I'm talking about. But I'm owner of this, so it's technically my face. My Ironhide face keeps falling the frig off and it's very annoying hopefully that'll stay on but anyway head up oh, there we go try to do the articulation here without the head falling off a hundred times got the head on a ball joint you know what we have no head on a ball joint there we have shoulders ratchety shoulders they ratchet all the way up very good articulation and I do apologize about the shadows I don't have as much lighting as I used to um, we have a waist joint, and it's nice that everything clears and nothing's really banging, uh, except for his butt cheeks here. Um, these um, butt cheeks, I mean, that's, it's just funny that they're round. Uh, kind of remind me of like those baboons with the pink butt, uh, except it's not pink, but it's a baboon butt. I'm just going to call it that. And he's got the uh, all ever popular diaper here. Uh, and the legs, which I was showing you before, are hindered by those skirts, which is, seriously, why can't they just make these things uh, swivel out like every other robot? Uh, legs go forward again. This line here will hit that. I mean, look at that. It's, it's weird, because usually the design of these figures, uh, you know, looks out for things like that. Uh, I'm sure this is a different designer from previous um, Masterpiece. We also get the thigh swivel. We get knee joint. Oh, thank God they're ratcheted. Thank you. Uh, they are ratcheted, but it's pretty much just only a 90 degree there. Uh, let's move back up here. I forgot to do the um, rest of the articulation here of the shoulders, which... Oh, that's right. It doesn't have bicep swivels. It just has the elbow, all right, which is uh, all right articulation, really only a 90 degree. We get the... Um, and here, which spins, not on a ball joint or anything, just spins just like pretty much every other masterpiece transformer. And then the little grippy hand here, the kung fu hands or whatever you want to call them. Um, and we have the ankles, right? They don't twist this way, they just angle this way. So I think that pretty much covers all the articulation and really Ironhide, every time your face falls off, my circuit sizzle. All right, let's put that there. All right, Ironhide, let's move on. I um, guess the next thing I can show you is the weapons. I got them here attached to this battle sled. So 
Uh, there's a little bit of uh, commotion going on with the way the uh, weapons go into the hand. And something about the thumbs breaking or some crap. So uh, I don't have time to read Facebooks and Twitters. So uh, I forgot how it goes. I probably should have read the Facebook and Twitters. But essentially what's going on is people are snapping the thumb or stressing it from trying to put the gun in. And you kind of, from what I see, this tab is a little too high up uh, to, have, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You guys really want to see that weapon on there? Let's just do it that way. I'm not breaking my thumbs over this. But there it is. He gets two of these guys. Two, two, two. Two is my lucky number. Titties coming twos. Unless you're really weird. All right. So there's his uh, laser pistols. We also get the uh, static laser gun. Shoot static and your hair stands up or something. This one right there. Again, I'm not really tabbing them in. I don't want to break my iron hide uh, since I have a tendency to break stuff when I'm reviewing it. So let's not do that. Um, next, we'll check out the Zambot hands, which I like to call them, uh, which is actually the little nozzle hands. So go ahead and check that out. You know what I just realized, guys, as I'm showing you these weapons? I did not show you the, uh, what do you call it, the weapons in van mode. Wow, probably going to lose a lot of subscribers. You didn't show the weapons in vehicle mode. All right, so we got to do this to use the uh, nozzles or the hands, the alternate hands with the nozzles. Little Zambot hands here. All right, so he's like, woo. I'm shooting water through my fingers. All right, so you get you guys get the idea. It's just shooting water through his fingers here. It's also got um different nozzles. All right, these right here. All right, so you also get this type of nozzle, uh, which is kind of cool. And then he's got these other ones, which are referenced as nozzles, but I read somewhere that these are just. Um, Pretty much how the G1 was, or something like that, where the gun would peg in, uh, but they call it a nozzle also, like a barrel nozzle or something like that. And I actually called it liquid shooter nozzle. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, pretty cool. I like that it comes with all these accessories, even though I will never display it with all these damn accessories. Uh, you notice here, this popped off. That's actually uh, going to snap right in. I do like the way they did this here so the shoulders don't pop out. I would have been really annoying if those shoulders just pop out. Uh, but they put these little tabs and they made it out of a flexible plastic. Thumbs up. They didn't leave it ABS. They made it out of, I guess, nylon, whatever the hell that would be. And um, he's also got the rocket launcher, guys. We will check that out. We will put this uh, rocket launcher together by attaching these little bits here. All right, we'll turn it around here. And it's just going to peg right in there. And you can go ahead and recreate Ironhide as seen in the Immobilizer. All right? What's cool is you don't have to keep the effects on there. You can actually just have them wearing the rocket without the effects. Um, but it kind of uh, amplifies or uh, brings emphasis to, I should say, this area here. His butt, his uh, baboon butt, it makes it look a lot more hollow. This way he does look a little bit awkward. Um, so I'm going to choose not to put that on. Kind of cuts down on the way that looks there. All right, but again, awesome that they've included everything. And Ironhide also comes with uh, this little thing that you put behind the windshield. So when he's scanning with this little sonar thing, a uh, little thing would pop up here just like on a show. Bring this down and like that and then pop it right back up. It's a cool little effect. Um, it looks... But, I mean, it's just a piece of cardboard. Uh, I wouldn't expect anything more. But it, the effect of the window being clear and tinted, it kind of almost makes it look like that little design is glowing, even though it's just a simple printed piece of cardboard. It would have been nice to see this in plastic, though, since, uh, you know, obviously you're probably going to keep uh, this for a long time. Things happen. You drool on stuff. Cat takes a piss all over your toys. Uh, but, you know, at least they included this, which is uh, really nice. Um, 
what I'll do here, I want to show you guys the wrist sonar thing. Where is it? It's right here. Alright, that pops right in. Look at that. So this is cool that it comes with all these accessories. I'm actually very happy with this release. Very, very happy. I'm really looking forward to Ratchet now. Uh, finally, they made this guy. And um, not done. Where the hell is his other face? You get this guy right here. So we all know Ironhide dies. And right before he dies, he makes his face. All right, so let's go ahead and get that face put on. First, we'll take this little thing off. Come on, fall off. Now you don't want to fall off. Now you don't want to fall off. There you go. And this is the face. Why the long face? And, oh, look at this pose. Same pose someone would, would do if I knocked their head off. Look at that. Totally. I, I can't post things for the life of me. And all I do is punch a robot in the face and somehow I get the awesomest pose I've probably ever done on video here uh, by mistake. Anyway, we're going to put the face here. I want to show you that pose again because it kind of goes with his face like, Oh, I'm falling. So that's a cool pose right there. But anyway, that allows you to create the scene, recreate, not create. Recreate the scene where Ironhide gets killed, which is basically this right here. No! Such heroic nonsense. That's the worst Megatron impression. Let's try that again. Such heroic nonsense. Pew, pew. Uh. While that whole scene was cool, everybody shooting and dying and everything, I, I don't get it. As a kid, it bothered me. They survived so many damn freaking episodes, and then out of nowhere, Decepticons show up, and boom, all of a sudden, their weapons are super awesome and just kill everybody off. Um, but yeah, guys, this is uh, pretty much going to be uh, not the end. How awful of me not to do scale comparisons. So we're going to get a, a Polyon here, just so you can see how he scales with the Polyon, and hopefully he fits in there. All right. And next, we're going to scale him next to Optimus Prime and some Autobots. There we are. And let's just get the regular face on there. It's kind of annoying. I noticed something like this little thing moves back and forth. I I'm assuming it's to help you pop the face off. You push this back and the face pops off. But I don't really need help with that because the face pops off regardless. Hopefully, it's just something I'm doing weird because uh, I'd hate to think that this face falls off so easily I have no clue what's going on there but anyway there's the face and ah oh, jeez alright anyway so that's pretty much the end guys uh, if you're enjoying the videos please subscribe and like if you want to pick one of these up there's a link in the description below as usual uh, support the people that support me so I can keep this going and if you have any questions or comments leave them below uh, and I do recommend this if you're an Ironhide fan, even if you're not an Ironhide fan, uh, as long as you like what you see, I would definitely recommend it, guys. Very nice figure. And much better than the pictures lead you to believe. Um, and that's it, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.